Okay, we are on Facebook now, if we want to get started. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Nicholas Platt. I'm the founding chair of the New Jersey Local Media, which is hosting this event, along with Amanda Richardson, our executive director. We welcome all our attendees and our esteemed panelists. Today, we will be discussing the election in New Jersey, focusing on the 7th and the 11th congressional districts and the special election in the 25th legislative district and what it means for our state. We are fortunate to be joined today by Assembly Minority uh, Leader John Bramnick, Republican Union, Leroy Jones, Essex County Democratic Chair, and most likely will be the state's Democratic Chair, Colleen O'Day, Editor at Large for New Jersey Spotlight News, and Fred Snowflack, Political Reporter for New Jersey, uh, Insider New Jersey. Um, I am the founding uh, member of this organization and um, as many of you know, I was named with, along with Mayor uh, Jordan Glatt, the former mayor of Summit, uh, to run the Czar program in the state two and a half years ago to use shared services as a way to bring down New Jersey's crippling property tax crisis. Um, so, Amanda, do you want to take it away? I didn't unmute myself. I'm always telling people to remember that. <laughs> um, thanks, Nick. And thank you to all the panelists for joining us. Um, so our, our organization, the Corporation for New Jersey Local Media, was founded to preserve and expand the quality and accessibility of professional journalism that we think is vital to community, to civic engagement, and to the practice of democracy. And it's forums like these that promote civic engagement and are a vital part of our mission. Uh, and I just want to mention we're a nonpartisan organization. And in fact, our board chair, Nick, is the Republican I ran against as a Democrat last year. Uh, so before we start, just a few housekeeping items for everyone. If you have a question for the panelists, please put it in the Q&A box, which is at the bottom of your screen. And if you're having a technical problem, please use the chat box to flag it. We're recording this webinar and we're going to make it available within the week. So that brings us to today's topic. This year's election has been unusual and we aren't likely to have all of the results for a couple more weeks. We do know some results here in New Jersey, Senator Cory Booker and representatives Mikey Sherrill in the 11th district and Tom Malinowski in the 7th district have all won re-election. And in fact, only the race for the house seat in the 2nd district is still too close to call here in New Jersey. Uh, locally, it's a different story for a lot of the races. We're still waiting for the final counts to come in and that might not happen until the week of Thanksgiving. In the special election for the 25th legislative district, Democrats Rapande Mehta and Darcy Drager are ahead right now, but it's unclear if they're gonna maintain that lead. Uh, and perhaps even more surprising, the Morris Democratic freeholder candidate, Carrie Amaro, currently has the lead against the Republican incumbent, Typhoon Selen. If she wins, she'll be the first Democratic freeholder elected in Morris since 1973. And then in Somerset, the preliminary results show that the two Democrats have ousted the last two Republicans on their freeholder board, flipping the board from decades of being all Republican to all Democratic in just three years. So as we contemplate what the final results may be, we've brought together this group of experts to give us their thoughts on what all of this means for New Jersey. Um, so I'm gonna to turn to our first topic, which is what it all means. So what do yesterday's results nationally and in New Jersey say about the state of politics today? Uh, and how does each of you expect the presidential election to go in the days ahead? What's the impact on the Republican and the Democratic parties here in New Jersey? So Chairman Jones, I'll start with you. Thank you, Amanda. And, uh, you know, let me just say that it is, uh, you know, and indeed a pleasure to, uh, to be on with uh, such distinguished panelists. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, equally distinguished, uh, you know, host and hostess. And, uh, you know, just to, uh, just to get to the heart of the question, uh, you know, in, in New Jersey, uh, you know, we're obviously seeing a, uh, you know, democratic blue wave. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, hit, uh, you know, parts of New Jersey that, uh, you know, have typically been, um, you know, Republican. Uh, you know, Monmouth County, uh, you know, where, uh, you know, Paul Penna and, you uh, and Moria Nelson, uh, you know, hold a uh, very, very slim race for freeholder. Uh, you know, you can move up to uh, Huntington County where you clearly see, uh, you know, Joe Biden holding a lead. In, uh, you know, in Morris County, uh, you know, Joe Biden and, and Cory Booker, uh, you know, are holding, uh, you know, significant leads there. Uh, in Bergen County, uh, you know, 60,000, uh, you know, vote lead. So, uh, you know, so you can clearly see that, uh, you know, New Jersey has established itself 
as a very strong and viable, uh, you know, democratic state. Uh, you know, I hate to get into the blue states, red states thing, but uh, you know, Jersey is uh, clearly, uh, you know, a very dark blue uh, state in the, in the union. Thank you. Uh, and Assemblyman Bramnick, do you have a take perhaps from the Republican side? Oh, I certainly do. Let me first just clear up a couple issues. And that is that uh, the votes in Morris County were very preliminary. And that would uh, relate to both Bucco, uh, Senator Bucco, and Assemblywoman Dunn. So that was a very small number, uh, absolutely not indicative of what's to come. And I'm not making, I'm not, I'm not gonna avoid your question, but I just wanna clear some things up. And Tom Kane has not actually conceded. The reason I wanna put that on the record is because my comments that I'm going to talk about actually don't, don't relate to those races because those relates, uh, races aren't over. But let me say this, and I've said this starting at the reorganization of the legislature almost two and a half years ago as the Republican leader. Uh, the way Donald Trump handles himself and the way he treats other people is actually uh, a problem for us in New Jersey. You have to be respectful. I became a Republican because of people like Governor Tom Kane, Rodney Freelinghausen, Leonard Lance, even Nick Platt. So I've said from day one, if that's the way the president is going to act, which means you know calling people names, saying the things he said, that is gonna be bad for New Jersey Republicans. I've always said that the New Jersey Republican Party needs to be the New Jersey Republican Party. I am not part of a cult. And I believe that some of the results are directly related to the hostility towards this president. And I've been criticized for that, but let me tell you something. When you lose, you lose. We lost uh, almost every congressional seat and it looks like we're not doing much better this time. So either we can face the truth that this kind of attitude by this president, that's not talking about policy though. Before you get the policy, you have to respect and like the individual. And unfortunately in New Jersey, as opposed to certain states, there's a lack of respect for this president, how he handles himself personally. I've said it, the Trump people ran against me, the Democrats ran against me, everybody ran against me. But if we want to be honest, that's our situation. Let's treat people with respect and civility. And in my judgment, if we do that, the Republican Party can do well in this state. So Amanda, can I just comment on that? Sure. It, and I'm not quite sure what the rules are, but uh, you know, the, the assembly minority leader uh, you know, couldn't have put it you know, more perfect. Uh, you know, with the exception, uh, you know, yes, there are some, you know, there are preliminary numbers in Morris County, you know, Rupande and Darcy, uh, you know, the Democrats, are, you know, have a, you know, have a, a lead there. And we hope that, you know, that uh, continues. But, uh, you know, if I had said everything that uh, John Bramnick had said about Donald Trump, you would have expected me to say that. But, uh, you know, that is a testimony to New Jersey itself that John Bramnick can be, you know, that clear, that concise, that pointed, and more importantly, that principle. You know, sometimes it's not about Democrat and Republican. It's about civility, it's about respect, and it's about respecting your fellow man and woman. And, uh, you know, that's why I have such great respect for John Bramnick. And that's, that's, you know, simply what I really wanted to get on the record. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Um, I actually would just have a quick follow up. I, you know, I, the presidential results are obviously not in all the way, but uh, do you think that if Trump loses it, what effect will that have on the Republican Party in New Jersey specifically? Well, I'd be very specific. You know, who's ever in charge after a period of time, they're not liked. Uh, politics is a pendulum, right? So uh, when you're in charge for a period of time, uh, you have to make decisions. And the more decisions you make, the more people don't like you. So I have to tell you that if Joe Biden wins and they take over the White House, then the same thing happens to any incumbent. At some point in time, the tables turn. So, and I'm just being practical here. If you have a Democratic governor and a Democratic president, all of a sudden the minority party looks better many times. 
That's not actually happening yet with Governor Murphy. It did happen with Governor Christie in his second term. You know, obviously we had a Bridgegate issue, but bottom line is uh, the pendulum swings back and forth. Look at the presidential elections over the years. Uh, Obama was a reaction to Bush, right? Uh, Trump is a reaction to Obama. If Biden wins, that's a reaction. So that's the way the American public works. It's kind of a pendulum. So I have to tell you that when you're in charge, it's a lot harder than being in the minority. <laughs> you know, I, I think, I think um, it's, it, yes, it's very, very cyclical. And, uh, you know, I'm just hoping that pendulum, you know, swings very slow. You know, we built the foundation of the Democratic Party here in the state that, uh, you know, is second to none uh, you know, to any other state in the union. And I'm very, very proud of being a part of that apparatus. Uh, you know, but, uh, you know, what I do have to just comment on is that, you know, uh, the response to Donald Trump was not so much Obama. Uh, the response was more so Hillary Clinton. So, um, you know, so, uh, you know, if, if Obama had the opportunity to run for a third term, I believe the outcome of that particular election, you know, would have been, uh, you know, much different. And uh, you know we would probably see be seeing things a little bit differently now. But um, but historically you sort of swing back and forth. So I understand you, you may be correct that Obama might have done better uh, than Hillary did. But over the years you saw the kind of pendulum swing back and forth, even in New Jersey, right? We've had but it's taken governors, a, it's, right? It's, so we've it's had, been a, yeah. it's been more generational, John, than 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 you know uh, you know over a short period of time. Um, you know, be, uh, you know, there was a period when I served in the legislature. Uh, you know that uh, you know uh, Christy Whitman, you know, came in, you know, with a uh, you know with a Republican sweep, and uh, you know the the uh, the Democratic Assembly at time at that time, I believe, consisted of twenty three members. Uh, you know, and uh, you know, my whole uh, my whole four terms in the in the legislature was in the minority. And then I, you know, when I, you know, when I left the legislature, you know, that's the uh, the year that uh, you know the the um, the majority began to uh, you know to evolve. And uh, you know, it's been a majority since uh, you know since two thousand one thereabouts. So uh, you know, it's almost been a generation of uh, you know of democratic majority here. Yes, you know, there is a pendulum effect, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, depending on, you know, the environment, the politics and, you know, and conditions, you know, depends on, you know, how, you know, how, how long it takes that pendulum to swing. But legislature okay, is uh, different a, than chief executive. Sorry, go ahead. We'll I'm stop. just going to we'll jump stop. in yet to let our reporters get, get a word of in course. here. Sorry so, about so, that, guys. <laughs> so, Colleen, I'd just like I, to, to throw the question to you. Uh, if you need to, what, what do the results say really about the state of politics today and especially in New Jersey? Yes. So I think that, you know, um, our two leaders there have really done a great job in, in kind of uh, setting us up here. Um, I think what's going to be interesting to see is what happens next year in New Jersey. We, we do have many more Democrats, about a million more uh, registered Democrats than we do Republicans, but we have not had a Democrat who has been reelected to governor since uh, Brendan Byrne, which goes back quite a ways. Um, the Republicans have done a, a, a great job, you, you know, you, uh, in terms of reelection, uh, just the Democrats haven't. So, it, you know, this, this certainly we have seen a blue wave in 2018. Um, not so much last year, but that's a very different election when it's just the assembly at uh, atop the ticket. You know, the Republicans picked up seats down in South Jersey, but you know, here again, it looks like um, certainly when you see a hundred and county um, leading toward Biden, uh, wow, that's that's really uh, quite a statement. Um, you know, we'll see if that holds up because again, these are all partial results, but um, it will be interesting to see if this wave continues next year. Um, in, into the uh, gubernatorial election. Great, thanks. And Fred, I, I I'll have, give you the last I, word. I happen to think it will, Colleen. I, I really <laughs> do. And uh, you know, I, I, I'll have a you know, I, I have more of an investment in it at that point in time as well. <laughs> <laughs> sure, you sure will. So, so Fred, what about you? You're you need to unmute. Hold on. There we go.
Okay. Yes. Yeah, I'm getting back to the original question about the effect of like what 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 Donald, Donald Trump's effect on New Jersey. I think if Donald Trump loses the presidency, and he met very well might, I think that would be the best thing that could happen to New Jersey Republicans. I mean, a lot of people I talk to, they're not as forthright as Mr. Bramnick is, but they kind of say the same thing privately. And I think if you look back and see what happened in 2018 when Mikey Sherrill won and Tom Malinowski in these two suburban districts, it's true that some people say that the demographics are changing, but I live here, the demographics are not changing all that much. I think Republicans lost moderates. I mean, suburban people who just were annoyed at but Mr. Bramnick says that uh, Trump's behavior. And you saw that in 2018 and you saw it again yesterday. And I think that that's assumed for the sake of discussion, if Trump is no longer around, Republicans could run for office and no one's gonna ask them, like reporters are not gonna ask him, what do you think of Donald Trump's latest tweet? And, and, if, and Republicans would then be able to concentrate on Phil Murphy and some of the things he has done wrong, quote unquote. I think that would help them immensely. I don't know. I don't know, Mr. Mr. Bramnick. I don't know how many others would say it as candidly as you did. Well, they won't say it. And I'll tell you why they won't say it. Because when I ran last year, if you recall, in a general election, I had the Democrats on my left yep. and I had two people on my right who said I wasn't Trump enough. And they yep. came to a meeting and they said, if you don't apologize to the president and endorse him now, we're going to run against you just to lose. And I go like this. That's the end of this meeting. All I'm saying is, let's just tell the truth. If you tell the truth, what people want today is authenticity. That's yep. number one. The reason Trump won and the reason Chris Christie won by 60% in the second term is people go, I may not agree with this guy, but I think he's authentic. The day of doing a commercial where you take a poll and you say, I'm going to lower your taxes. First of all, they don't believe you're going to lower your taxes. And number two, you lose credibility because you look like a politician with political speak. The day of political speak is over. You use it, either tell the people the truth, tell them how you feel, show what your soul is, or get out of this business, or they'll throw you out of the business. Simple as that. Well, I agree, I agree with what uh, Mr. Jones had said about John Bramnick being a brave soul. I mean, I was a former mayor of Harding Township. And I still sit on my town council and I had a Mikey Sherrill and a Joe Biden sign outside of my driveway. So I, I, at some point, uh, Donald Trump makes it very easy for you to do the right thing. Thanks, Nick. Uh, Fred, did you have anything else on that? No, no, I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. It does sound like Mr. Trump may not be one of those presidents who gets invited to your house, but... <laughs> <laughs> look, I, I've been with the president. I've been with. Look, it, oh, no, no, I'm told I missed the flat. Oh, I'm, I don't think he, I don't think he's coming to my house. He may go to Nick's house. Look at Nick's background. I'd go. Everyone go to that house right there. Those he doesn't are, seem every, to be a history buff, Mr. Trump. I don't know, but it does. <laughs> I got a few well, jokes about that. Yeah. So speaking of, of Nick and this region, um, just to talk a little bit more about the, the races around here, specifically the ones in the 7th and 11th, and then this early lead for the Democrats in Morris and the Somerset Freeholder races, um, and the 25th district legislative races that I talked about, and noting, of course, that Assemblyman Bramnick is right, these are really preliminary results, not not a huge percentage of the votes have actually been counted, um, but they still say something. So that's that's my main question here. Do we expect that lead to hold up and what does it really mean for this area? So Fred, I'll start with you. My guess is I don't think it's gonna hold up. I mean, it's. I think they've only counted like 25, 30% of the vote. I mean, it's not as if they've counted 70% of the vote. And granted, I mean, the vote they count in the county, it's the legislative district is only half the county. So you gotta take that into consideration. But no, I, 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 just, don't, I just don't see it holding up. I could, I could be completely wrong, but what it does mean, even if it doesn't hold up, is the county is competitive. Colleen and I were at the Daily Record for a great many years, and we knew that, like, and Nick knows, like every year somebody, going back to when Dean Gallo was in Congress, it'd always be a Democrat running against Dean Gallo, running against Rodney Freelinghines. And then 99% of the time, they were just names on a the ballot. They didn't, they didn't raise money. They didn't try to raise money. They didn't really run a campaign. 
And now, of course, since Mikey Sherrill, she won a campaign, she ran a campaign and won, but even on the legislative level the last few years, people have been losing. I mean, Darcy Drager ran before last year, but the race is competitive. And if you watch the Republicans, they certainly know that. And they realize it used to be in Republican politics that people didn't care about the general election because they used to fight each other in the primary. And they figured, hey, whoever wins the primary is gonna win the general election. But that's, that's no longer the case. I mean, that's what it means, even if the Democratic candidates you mentioned are not successful this year. Uh, Amanda, okay. just factually, you should be aware that they're counting these votes chronologically, meaning that the votes that came in first in Morris County are being uh, tallied first. So you would think and they would lean Democratic. The passion, the passion on the Democratic side yeah. to return ballots, we looked at the numbers and they were way ahead as the Republicans mm -hmm. caught up later. So that chronological voting pattern is important for everyone to know about. I yes. think there's also been uh, some discussion at the national level about this blue shift that comes later um, in in the counting because the, a lot of um, you know, the, the Democratic areas, uh, cities, uh, people went, wanted to go out and vote, um, you know, on election day or or maybe have been casting provisional ballots because of issues, potential issues with registration. I think in this election, one of the things that we've been um, looking at and, and wondering about is if there isn't kind of a red shift because um, more of, of the Republicans here may have wanted to go out and vote in person because they were not thrilled with um, Murphy, Governor Murphy, you know, having this all or, you know, mostly uh, mail-in ballot elections. So that's something I think else also for us to, to watch out for. And those ballots won't be counted for, you know, you won't start counting those for another week. Right. But, 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 so, but when you look at, you know, when you look at the early trends and, uh, you know, you could, you know, you see, uh, you know, Biden and Booker, uh, you know, just having, uh, you know, just non-traditional uh, leads in counties like, you know, like Morris, uh, you know, you, you kind of kind of wonder, uh, you know, whether or not, uh, you know, to Colleen's point, uh, you know, the, you know, the mail-in ballots on the, on this, uh, you know, this, this blue shift, you know, between, uh, you know, those ballots that come in by, you know, by mail versus those ballots that walk through the door, you know, have some, uh, you know, some rele relevance and ultimately some, uh, you know, some impact on the election. Um, you know, I, you know, I only have one, one municipality that's in the seventh district and uh, that's Milburn uh, and Tom Malinowski carried Milburn, uh, you know, more than two to one, I believe. And, uh, you know, that will continue to, you know, to move, you know, move forward, uh, you know, as we continue to count, uh, you know, more votes as ballots come in, you know, through the, uh, you know, through the, uh, the seven day period, uh, you know, of uh, postmark ballot. But uh, and we'll see that uh, you know play out. I think in in Morris and other parts of the county. Tom Tom Malinowski ran you know won that that district uh, you know last year. Now you know yes he's running against uh, you know Tom Kane Jr. who has a you know very significant uh, you know and meaningful name in New Jersey. Uh, you know as does as did Leonard Lance. However, um, you know you you know back to uh, you know the pendulum you know swinging you know that we talked about. Uh, you know, there is a uh, an erosion in, um, you know, in uh, brand and, uh, you know, brands erode over, you know, generations. So you don't really have, you know, the same generational prowess, uh, you know, within, uh, you know, the, you know, the Tom, you know, the, the Tom Kane, uh, you know, aura that, uh, you know, existed, uh, you know, 20 years ago. So, and Donald Trump, you know, looms large in that, uh, you know, getting back to, uh, you know, what we talked about earlier that was so, um, you know, pointedly captured by, you know, Assemblyman Bramnick is, um, you know, Donald, you know, Donald Trump, you know, has, you know, been so polarizing and, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, so, um, you know, so divisive, you know, that, uh, you know, his early rhetoric you know, with early voting, you know, tend to really turn people off and anybody that's remotely associated with him, you know, will, uh, you know, eventually bear the brunt of that. So I think, you know, we're going to see some of that play out, uh, you know, as we, uh, you know, as we look, you know, as we continue this counting going forward. I'm, I'm a little mesmerized by the fact that Morris County <clears throat> has, uh, you know, has, 
had slowed down its counting process a little bit, um, you know, as opposed to other counties. I mean, I I come from a democratic bastion, uh, you know, that uh, you know that you know has a uh, you know almost a eighty percent plurality here, uh, you know, and you know and we are, you know, counting, uh, you know, daily, uh, you know, around the clock, uh, you know, as best as that can be, uh, you know, to ensure that, uh, you know, all votes are, you know, are in. And uh, we were, you know, we're going to report that out daily so that the public understands, you know, what's happening. So, uh, you know, I, I would hope that that would be playing out in counties like Morris and, uh, you know, the other counties that make up the, uh, the uh, seventh uh, congressional district. We can't figure out why the counting stopped, and and it's it's confusing to me. I don't really know the board of elections people up there, but they did stop counting last night. They were going to come back today and just scan, and all of a sudden they yeah. decided to start counting. But getting have- back to the fundamental issue of Republicans versus Democrats, uh, policy issues that I think are important. What happens is, and I've said this to people who want to understand what's going on. If I don't like somebody, let's, for example, I don't like Fred Snowflake. I actually like him. But let's, for my purpose of my hypothetical, I go, I don't Who's like gonna believe that? Well, I, <laughs> he's a great guy. I like the guy a lot. But I need a hypothetical. So I picked on Fred, right? So here's my thing. If I don't like Fred, I stop listening to him, right? I go like this. All right. They go, Fred, oh, I'm not going to talk about So we can't even get to the policy issues, right? We can't talk about debt. We can't talk about taxes because people stop. Oh, you're Republican? Stop. And that really is related to, and, and Chairman Jones said it, to the brand. And that's why I try to go out there and get people hopefully to say, hey, listen, I understand you don't like him, but please listen to me on my issues. I had to do that last time. But if somebody hates somebody, right, they don't care what the policy issue is. And that's kind of the trap the New Jersey Republicans got into. Our message, whatever it might be, no matter what the Governor Murphy does wrong, the audience says, I don't care. You know, like Republican, I'm not talking to you. And I think, like anything else, things turn around. And when Chairman Jones is the chairman of the Democratic Party, and if Biden is the president, right, you may be faced with issue campaigns as opposed to Trump campaigns. Yeah, let me let me ask the chairman that. Just uh, my feeling is, I think that John Ramnick said it as well, that if Donald Trump is not around anymore, from a practical point of view, it's going to be bad for Democrats in New Jersey. What do you think about that? Well, you know, I can't argue that. Uh, yeah. You know, that that's very. I mean, true. I'm leaving a policy. I'm leaving a straight, policy. Be straight side. talk about it. Yeah, I got to be straight talk about it. Uh, you know, Donald Payne. Excuse me, Donald Donald Trump. Joe has, Donald Payne. You said that. Go ahead. I know I said that. But that that's my friend, and you know, I'm I'm just so glad that he won as well. But um, but Donald Trump, you know, has been the most polarizing, uh, you know, figure in you know modern political history. And, uh, you know, he has been the best weapon for the Democratic Party. You know, he has been, you know, our single, you know, our single most powerful, you know, uh, you know, vote getter, you know, in, uh, you know, in, in the last set, you know, the last several election cycles. And, uh, you know, and yes, with, you know, as, as things seem to be trending nationally, uh, you know, he might be, you know, he, he, it looks like he might be, uh, you know, looking to start packing his bags and moving back to Trump Plaza or uh, Mar-a-Lago or, you know, I doubt very much he comes back to Bedminster. But, um, but. No, we were thinking something more different than that. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Whoa, easy, easy, easy. <laughs> but, 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 you know, so, so it's going to get back to, uh, you know, just sheer policy. It's going to get back to, you know, Democrats you know, making sure that policy, you know, that, uh, you know, that we hold near and dear to, uh, you know, that are based on dem- democratic principles, you know, are communicated to our constituencies and, uh, you know, are beneficial to, you know, everyday man, men and women. And one of the things that, uh, you know, th- and this is just not in New Jersey, but I believe this is statewide uh, uh, or nationally. Um, we, you know, we, we've, because of Donald Trump, and because of his divisiveness, you know, we've, you know, we've moved into an environment that is, uh, you know, that has been so divisive that has ripped the country down the middle, uh, you know, and, you know, not so much here in New Jersey, but, you know, the rest of the country, uh, you know, has, uh, you know, has been impacted by, you know, his, 
his divisive rhetoric. And, uh, you know, and, and when I'm on my soapbox out there trying to get folks motivated, you know, I'm always saying that uh, in order for democracy to work, people have to vote. And that's so that's very true. But in order for our system of government to work and democracy to really be realized, people have to become more empathetic. And, uh, you know, and that is going to be, you know, the challenge, not just of Joe Biden, because, you know, he's going to wear that on his shoulders. That is going to be the challenge of every one of us on every level of government to beat that, you know, the, to beat that that ugly spirit back and to begin to, res, you know, to resume in an environment where folks walk, work across the aisle with each other. You know, folks understand that, you know, yeah, there's differences that we have, you know, but uh, the, the more things that make us the same are more important than the things that make us different. And that's the those are the foundations that we have to get, you know, renewed and, uh, you know, we have to become closer to in order for government to work again. You said something in the beginning. Yes. I just want to ask everybody else. You mentioned that Donald Trump has to pack his bags. I mean, that could be a very relevant question. Is he going to pack his bags? Is he going to leave? Or is he going to try? I mean, is he going to try to stay? I mean, I'll be, imagine there's going to be litigation and what have you. What do you think of that? Well, well he can't because it, what's he going to do? Hold on to a coffee table leg? as they're dragging him out of the Oval Office. I mean, he doesn't have control of the military. So it's just uh, no. petulant. So not to, to- Go ahead, I'm sorry. To redirect, but just to bring it back to a little more of the what's going on locally, um, I just wanted to ask Colleen, because you've all, you all touched on the vote counting and kind of what's going on with how votes are being counted, which votes have come in first. And I know Colleen, you wrote a little bit about the timeline. I'm wondering about your take on, on what's happening with that. Yeah, I, it, it's really great that um, uh, Assemblyman Bramnick brought that up because that is, that is kind of a very important, um, an important piece of what's happening here. Um, so I actually am doing some analysis for publication, I guess, as soon as I can finish writing it. Um, it looks like about 76% of the votes statewide that had come in as of 11 today has been counted. Um, so there's still about almost a million of the votes that had that had come in as of 11 today. Now that does not include in some of the mail-in ballots that came that people dropped off yesterday because they have not yet been scanned in. Um, it doesn't include any of the mail-in ballots that are gonna come in over the next um, six days, I guess it is now through next Tuesday. Um, as Chairman Jones pointed out, those will be, as long as they're postmarked as of yesterday, those will be counted. And then we start counting um, all of those provisional ballots and we've got no idea how many provisional ballots there are. So we really are looking to get a, a official numbers. Um, we are looking at more than a week. You know, November 20th is the date that the counties have to certify their numbers. Um, so we're, we're really looking at quite a timeline here. So there's a lot of time for Morris County to do that counting. Um, it, it is hard to understand. You know, we're, we have this um, uh, bottom up election system. I think most states do um, where the counties really kind of are in control of what happens and counties do things very differently. So um, in terms of processing the mail-in ballots, the, they take so much longer because you have to scan them in, you have to check the signatures, you have to take them out of the envelope, you separate the, end, the certificate from the ballot so that no one knows how a person voted, and then you have to flatten out that, that um, ballot so that it's going to go smoothly through the, the scan machine. And what some of the counties are doing is waiting until they get big chunks of those that are ready to go because the scanners can process them very quickly. So um, different counties are doing things in different ways. And I mean, we're seeing, uh, wow, Gloucester has almost 100% of the votes counted. Essex has 95% um, counted, but you know, Morris County has less than 50%. So, and, and again, that's just as, as of the ones that had been scanned in as of 11, um, you know, so there, there really is a lot of waiting left to do, particularly when we talk about the, the you know, the freeholder race and those um, uh, two state legislative races. I think Thank we need you. to get Colleen up there in Morris County because uh, <laughs> they do it like she said, they should be done. 
um, and you know what that means is right we're doing a lot of speculating so while we're speculating you guys have touched a bit on the 2021 election for governor but but does do we know anything does do does this year say anything about what's going to happen next year the governor and the legislature does the biden victory or does a potential biden victory sorry make it easier or harder for republicans to run against murphy um is there going to be more of a focus on state issues if biden wins which is something that i think you've all been alluding to um and assemblyman bramnick i want to start with you and of course if you'd like to declare your candidacy for governor today you can give us the scoop right now you know that's the only time i do political speak i want to thank you for asking the question <laughs> uh, I'm very proud that you brought that up. That's the only time I, and I'm really good at political speak. If I have to, I go like this. And, you know, I appreciate the fact that my name is even, cons anyway. So let's get to the, the real issue. But I can do political speak for an hour and you have no idea what I said. And that's, that, that's uh, what politicians used to do. So let's talk about the situation that exists now and is what issues will be important to the the taxpayer and the residents three or four months from now. One thing we know is three months in politics is a lifetime. So we cannot begin to speculate how the political landscape is going to look. I can tell you that if you have a democratic president and, a, and we talked about it, a democratic governor, clearly issues become uh, the focus of the Republican brand as opposed to Donald Trump. But where we are three or four months from now in terms of a budget, in terms of taxes, in terms of Murphy's popularity, just think about this. We've had governors who win by 60% and they leave at 18%. And that's my friend, Chris Christie, okay? So you never know. All I can tell you is politics, the reason I love politics is it's never ever boring, right? You, you, if every single day something nutty is happening in politics, right? And consequently, for anyone to predict what's going to happen three or four months from now, bad. But it's tough when you're the governor and you've got that kind of debt and that kind of budget deficit and that kind of borrowing, you never know what's going to happen. So we'll see. But thank you for asking the question. <laughs> well, thanks for evading it. Um, so I'd like to turn. <laughs> that was good. Thank you for baby. <laughs> so, so Chairman Jones, it's yeah. expected that you'll be the Democratic state chair in 2021. So what's your take here? It's going to be a big year. Well, you know, I'm looking forward to a big year. And uh, <clears throat> and obviously I'm going to be, uh, you know, staunchly, uh, you know, behind, uh, you know, Governor, you know, Governor Murphy's reelection bid. Uh, you know, I think he's done, uh, you know, a great job, uh, you know, in his, uh, you know, first term. Uh, you know, I think he's, uh, you know, navigated the state through, uh, you know, one of the most awful periods in, uh, in the history of, uh, you know, our state and, uh, and our union through uh, the whole COVID-19 pandemic. And, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, with that job comes, you know, comes criticism, uh, you know, no matter what you do, uh, you know, folks, uh, you know, going to have a, a point of view. But, uh, you know, the lion's share of people in New Jersey feel that, uh, you know, Governor Murphy has, uh, you know, done an exemplary job with respect to uh, his handling of, uh, you know, COVID-19. And, uh, you know, and, and, you know, everyone knew when, uh, you know, he, he was, uh, you know, uh, initially elected that, uh, you know, he didn't inherit a theme park. Uh, you know, he, uh, you know, he inherited a state with, uh, you know, a lot of problems, uh, you know, largely caused by, uh, you know, the, you know, the gentleman that, uh, you know, Assemblyman Bramnick just mentioned, uh, you know, Chris Christie, who, you know, came in, uh, you know, with a, um, you know, a extremely promising, uh, you know, um, you know, numbers in terms of his popularity, uh, you know, but uh, by the time he left, you know, left out the door, uh, you know, he was, uh, you know, his numbers were, were, uh, you know, in the commode. Uh, so, um, you know, so, you know, yeah, anything can happen, but, you know, you have to, you know, you have to use history as a barometer and, uh, you know, you have to measure yourself going, you know, going forward and you have to be, uh, you know, you have to manage, uh, you know, your, your own expectations, you have to manage your own policy agenda and, uh, you know, you have to manage your relationships, relationships in the legislature, your relationships, uh, you know, external to the legislature and, uh, you know, and ultimately, uh, you know, the will of the people will determine, uh, you know, what your fate is. But I believe that, uh, you know, uh, you know, going forward, 
that uh, you know Governor Murphy will be resoundingly reelected. I think uh, you know this uh, you know this initial exercise that we went through on the presidential side, you know, is, uh, you know, a strong indicator where New Jersey is, you know, Colleen mentioned early in, uh, you know, in this discussion, you know, New Jersey uh, Democrats, uh, you know, are, um, you know, a million more than, uh, you know, the, than our, you know, Republican counterparts. And, uh, you know, and, and a lot of, uh, you know, our unaffiliates, uh, you know, kind of lean, uh, you know, to, uh, more to uh, the Democratic side on, you know, from a very mod moderate perspective. And I think all that will, uh, you know, you know, will go into, uh, you know, the strategy behind, you know, getting, uh, you know, Governor Murphy elected resoundingly. And I'd like, you know, I'd like to think that I'm going to be a, you know, a, a major, you know, uh, player in that, uh, you know, in that whole, uh, you know, uh, strategy. So you tell us Murphy would turn down a cabinet position with President Biden if President Biden wins. I mean, allegedly, or should I say, based on the polls, he's pretty, uh, Governor Murphy is popular right now. Why not take a cabinet position? Uh, isn't that a possibility? How does he turn down that request from the president? I think when you believe, uh, you know, that you're doing the people's work, uh, you know, and you're doing it on behalf of uh, New Jerseyans, uh, you know, that, you know, that outweighs, uh, you know, those, uh, you know, those ambitions, uh, you know, Governor Murphy is not a, a selfish individual. He's not, uh, you know, he's not an egotistic individual. Well, he'd get a nice place in Georgetown. They got those townhouses down there. He can live right there. Hey, Amanda, you just got your, you just got your question answered. He's already strategizing. Secretary, <laughs> he could be, he might be secretary of state. Was the ambassador from Germany? He's got international experience. I mean, that could be. That could be perfect for, you know, Joe Man, may call him tomorrow. He's trying, to get him, he's trying to get the governor out of here. So, uh, you know, so what do you think that means? <laughs> no, I'm, not, Are you, I'm just I'm just trying to give the news media some possible trying, food for thought. That's all. Open, he's trying to create an open seat. <laughs> are you are you writing a letter of recommendation, Assemblyman? <laughs> Actually, I would. Actually, no, I think he'd be great as a, a seat. Uh, ambassador to Germany. He should take that spot again. That's a great spot. He had you know? that job. If dinner parties. You look like uh, Nick Platt's. Look, look at Nick Platt's <laughs> back. That's like you like living in an ambassador's house. Well, the fact yeah. he, so he those, learned German, that's a, so that's he wouldn't go to language to go away. Governor Murphy will, okay. will remain here. But uh, you know, if 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 there was any truth to that, just know this: that the Democratic bench is very strong. Who do you like on the bench? Come on, you you want to make some news? Come I'm not on. The, I'm not the I'm not the state chair yet, so I can't claim to be the coach. But but <laughs> I know that I can look down that bench, and uh, you know if whoever. Are I'm you looking there, south? Or you looking north? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I let's, live up north. <laughs> let's let's get Colleen's take on 2021. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, I, this is a great discussion. Um, I if only. The assemblyman had gone just a little bit further, but it's he's getting well, pretty close. You can ask there. a question. You're in the media. You guys ask tough questions. Go ahead. Are you running? Me? Yes. Oh, it's way too early for that. We don't we don't even know what happened in the presidential election. But hey, what you? Thank you for asking the question. You know, Colleen, <laughs> you know, I've always had such great respect to you as a respect for you as a journalist, and it's so great to see you. How's the family? Thanks. <laughs> Colleen, you just got a mouthful of political speak. I sure did. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, so, you know, I think, as I said before, it, it will be really interesting to see, given that the Democrats have not done really well, at, uh, clearly at, at keeping the governor's seat. But certainly Governor Murphy is in a better position than past uh, Democratic governors have been because he does have this really, um, you know, high approval rating. Um, however, we can see from, you know, some of the the comments that we are hearing from the Republican side, uh, where some of their strategy is probably going, I'm not sure about Assemblyman Bramnick's, but, you know, it, it certainly hasn't been a, a really a clean record in terms of COVID. And who knows what the public is going to think about that, you know, whether there'll be a vaccine and people will be less concerned. But, you know, we, we have had, uh, you know, thousands and thousands of deaths in nursing home at this nursing homes at the start of this, and there's, um, you know, that is something that is is likely to come up and, and be brought up um, in terms of, you know, what did the administration do um, there? You've also got, you know, a lot of folks on the business side who are really hurting. You've got restaurants that have gone out of business. Um, that's going to be something that I think is going to get get brought up. So. 
as um, the assignment said, you know, a few months is a really long time in um, in an in election and in a in a political cycle. So there's but still an awful lot to come. If I may make one comment, and this is a compliment for Governor Murphy, right? One thing he does really well is he's calm. He doesn't get negative with the press. And I have to tell you that demeanor, if, if you're going to run against somebody with that demeanor, you have to make sure that you can cross-examine somebody like that who doesn't get defensive, who looks like a happy warrior, doesn't get mad at the press. And I have to tell you, I compliment him on that because what happens is if you don't get defensive, that's a real good positive way of not getting the media mad at you or the public mad at you. And Chairman Jones, I really believe that he's been able to do that even if they catch him with something he doesn't know. And that's a big deal. I have to tell you, one of the things I had was concerned with Chris Christie was, you know, don't make enemies, right? And one thing this governor does, he doesn't make enemies. And in politics, Ronald Reagan was a happy warrior. So if you're gonna run against a happy warrior, you better make sure that you explain to people just because he's happy doesn't mean that you're happy. How's that for a line, Chairman? That's great, man. That's why I like you. Okay. I, think, I also think that that now that you brought that up, the um, the governors, it used to be daily briefings. They're now not as, you know, they're a couple times a week. But those briefings about COVID really, really have um, helped his approval ratings and, and, you know, boosted his support among the public uh, because of that, that calmness that he exudes. And also he's, you know, he's honoring three folks who have recently died. Um, I think that's really powerful for, for viewers. Um, the, tens of thousands of people, you know, have been watching, certainly at the peak, we're watching that. You still get a lot of people who tune in on YouTube to watch. So I think that's been um, really strong for him and that his, um, his folks are used that really well. Yeah, they watch it from Florida and other states where they're all leaving from. <laughs> so what, what I'm, all, and I'm just saying that there are other issues there where people are exiting the state. In the meantime, he's really happy. He goes, look, you know, I just want to thank everybody for being here. That's really, it's a good strategy. I just don't think it's substantive. Yes, I think he's just being himself. I mean, you know, he's generally, uh, you, yeah. know, uh, you know, just a sincere, uh, straight talking guy. Uh, you know, as Colleen mentioned, he, he, yeah. he talks straight to the, you know, to the people of New Jersey yeah. daily. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, he didn't, you know, he didn't give him, you know, not to steal this uh, assemblyman, he didn't give him political speak, you know, he gave him, you know, he gave him straightforward facts, uh, you know, he, he, you know, he sympathized, you know, with, uh, you know, those who had lost loved ones, um, you know, and, uh, you know, he was tough on, uh, you know, those that, uh, you know, were violating the covenants of uh, the lockdown. You mean and, the knuckleheads? The knuckleheads? The knuckleheads, the yeah. knuckleheads right? Okay. Yeah, the knuckleheads. Well, you know, I, so, I don't know. But, He's always spiking the football, though. I'm that big on all those like cliches, spiking the football. You okay, know, just like, let's, full let's, stop. Let's, let's let Fred get a word in here. So, Sorry what are that. your thoughts Sorry. on the governor running? Period. Well, full stop. On 2021 in general. Oh, you know, I I think you mentioned a while before that three months is a long three months is a long time in politics. I mean, I think Murphy's approval rating certainly went up after because he was such a calming presence in, in the beginning of the pandemic. But we don't know what's gonna happen with the pandemic three months from now. And I don't know, maybe whatever, whatever the state New Jersey is in, say in January or February, people may turn again, not many people may sour on the job that he's doing. So it's, I don't think it's a, I mean, that, that could be a problem down the road, but still uh, we have to figure he'd be a, a very, Good bet for re-election, just a registration alone. I know Democrats have not been successful when they ran for a second term. As long as they extenuating circumstances, I mean, John Clausewitz ran against a guy at the time, Chris Christie, who was wearing a white hat because he was putting crooked politicians in jail. And people who someone who puts politicians in jail is always going to always going to be supported by the public. I don't know if the Republicans have someone like that out there. In like Marshall Dillon or something like. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the guy's a white hat. But there was something else. I mean, Corzine was at forty percent approval rating exactly. back then yeah. as well. Yeah. 
I mean, it wasn't, and look, I don't take anything away about Chris Christie as a candidate. I think he's an incredible speaker. But the point is, Corzine was at 40% approval rating, as I recall. Yeah, Corzine could, you know, could, people could never really warm up to John Corzine. Uh, you know, Phil Murphy is, uh, you know, is no John Cor Corzine. <laughs> Phil Murphy is his own guy. He's a, you know, he's a, you know, as, as I said, he's a straightforward guy. You know, he's as real as you can be. You know, he's managed, uh, you know, his, uh, you know, he's managed us through, uh, you know, the worst pandemic, uh, you know, in modern history, uh, you know, for this state and the nation and the world for that matter. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and, you know, I think he's going to be that outlier, uh, you know, that individual that, uh, you know, that, that gets that, you know, that Democrat that gets that second term, but he gets it in a way that, uh, you know, it, you know, folks begin to embrace him and, uh, you know, and rally behind him. And, uh, you know, and, and by no means am I spiking the football, uh, you know, but, um, you know, but I believe that, uh, you know, we have a, an excellent team and, uh, you know, and, you know, can be competitive with anyone that the Re Republicans put on the field. Well, wait a minute, is he funny though? He's doing his stand-up comedy? I don't think he's that funny. No, and I are coming very funny. close <laughs> to declaring right now. You know, pe people want somebody with a sense of humor and I just don't think he's, you know, I'm not sure, I mean, his personality is okay, it's about a five. I don't think it's a wait, ten. Wait a minute, Assemblyman. Now you know he was, you know, in in, in you know in college, he, you know, he was a thespian. He did acting at Harvard. Uh, you know, so I'm I'm sure I'm I'm sure if uh, you know he's challenged with an opportunity to you know to do stand up. Uh, you know, at you a, know, at a you club. know what? Okay, and so to, wait, to you know why I didn't go to Harvard. From... You know why I didn't go to Harvard because I wasn't accepted, and they got a list up there. I'm just telling you, I would have gone there, but I got when I was rejected, which is a problem. So to well, talk about a couple other to, things. It goes back to arithmetic, right? In high school, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know. I didn't you do good in that either. I didn't do good in arithmetic. Didn't get that math right. I needed a tutor. We didn't have so any money. We have some questions for the audience that I want to get to. And one of them is, is relevant here to get away from just the governor's race. Um, what? I'll just read it. It says, does the delay, delay in redistricting, the, the delay in redistricting approved by voters yesterday make it harder for the GOP in legislative races in 2021? <laughs> Obviously. Well, the whole purpose of the constitutional amendment was Democrats have a map that they won 10 years ago, right? It's a very difficult map for us. And they were out clever enough to put it on as a constitutional amendment. And it doesn't, how can it help us? It's, I mean, we've lost that map over and over again over the last 10 years. So yeah, yes, it's bad. But let me just- so What are your thoughts on that? Let me just be devil's advocate for a minute. Is it that, is it that big a deal? So I mean, the redistricting is two years later than it's supposed to be. Two years goes quick. What's the big deal? Well, I'm not, say, I'm not saying it's a big deal. I'm just saying if you have a democratic map and you had a chance of getting a map that was more favorable to Republicans, I can't imagine why that's a good thing, right? I mean, we're we gonna get that chance map. eventually. They get that chance in two years, right? Well, you're right, but I'd rather do it. I'd no, rather I have a Republican that. map now than I would two years from now. I mean, you know. But there's no guarantee. Colleen, that. what about you? Do you have any? Oh yeah, the, uh, absolutely. The, uh, the Republicans are going to have a, a tough time again, as they have over the last decade, be, because it is a Democratic map. And um, it seems like the state was kind of in a in a difficult position because of the um, the census numbers are likely to come in quite late. But on the other hand, um, the Democrats kind of waited till the last minute to push this um, legislation through and to push the amendment onto the ballot. And um, you know what hasn't been tackled yet is true redistricting reform, which would be not having, you know, five D's and five R's with, you know, working for 30 days and obviously not coming to an agreement and then, you know, suddenly putting this 11th member in. But, you know, there have been, been lots of suggestions for ways to improve that. And, you know, I, I'm not sure when that might happen um, because, you know, if the, party in, if the party in power continues to benefit from the current system, there's really no impetus for them to change it. Chairman, do you ha agree with all this or do you have a defense? 
No, I don't. I don't necessarily have a defense. Uh, you know. Uh, you know. I think. Uh, you know. We've been successful. Uh, you know, with the map. Uh, you know, over the last twenty years, actually. Uh, you know, this. Uh, you know, this. You know, this dates back. Uh, you know, twenty years ago. You know, we won the map. Uh, you know, then, and uh, you know, we. You know, we uh, won the map. You know, ten years later. Uh, you know, it's been a democratic map. Uh, you know, it gets goes back to you know uh, Fred's point that uh, you know what what difference does it make? Uh, you know. Uh, you know we. We, you know, we hunkered down, uh, you know, is 30 days enough? You know, I could argue that, uh, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, there should be some more time to, you know, to, you know, to take it through, you know, this process, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, it's going to get done. And, um, you know, and, uh, you know, if, if we can't agree, which, you know, between five Democrats and five Republicans, there's always, uh, you know, the, uh, the 12th member, you know, the, the 12th member, well, 11th member, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, appointed by the, uh, you know, the chief justice and, um, you know, and you know, that person will, uh, you know, make an assessment on, you know, what map best represents uh, New Jersey and, and and vote accordingly. And there we, you know, there we go. Those are the districts and we're off and running. So, um, you know, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm I supported the, uh, the constitutional amendment because of the census issues. And, um, you know, and I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, to seeing the, you know, the process being carried out as it normally is. Thank you. So we have a few more questions from the audience, but I think Assemblyman, you had to go. You know, I just told my next call, I moved it to 510 because I'm having a good time. (laughs) (laughs) I I told you five o'clock and things were going south. I was going to check out a couple (laughs) of minutes. So I, I, I moved the call to 510. Okay. I, like an exit, I got an exit strategy here. <laughs> and, and one other comment, uh, Mr. Jones, Chairman. Yes, sir. The outfit you have on, see, when you win that many elections, you can wear like cool stuff, right? <laughs> that jacket with that sweater. See, we're going to have, Republicans, we got to stay still like politicians until we start getting in the majority. Well, you know, get- I like that. I like. I'm liking that sweater vest. I mean, you got the memo. It's the same kind of you know color code. Yeah, this is grandpa stuff. This is you know. I mean, this. I don't think this is cool. That's one of the problems, with Republicans. We got to look a little cooler, right? So if I was to run for any statewide, I would look much cooler. I wouldn't wouldn't have that tie and jacket business. Mm-mm. No. Hey, so it's- I'm. I'm going to jump in here with another question. <laughs> okay. Um, so the question is, what do you make of that shift in Somerset to an all democratic freeholder board? Is that tied to Trump or is that a local issues thing? And uh, will the registration changes make Somerset a blue county long term? So is does my, anyone? Is that to me? I'll take that. <laughs> I'll take that. I, think it's a, I think it's a little bit of, I think it's a little bit of Trump, but it's a lot of, uh, you know, Peg Schaefer. And, uh, you know, Peg has, uh, you know, over the years worked and worked and worked and chipped away and chipped away and chipped away. And, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, you know, to, uh, it's a testament to, uh, you know, her stick to uh, you know, her hard work. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah, a lot of Donald Trump, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, sprinkles in there that, you know, that helps, you know, Democrats and I, you know, I don't, I'm not bash, uh, bashful about the fact that, uh, you know, he is, uh, you know, one of our best weapons. And, uh, you know, Peg has used that, uh, you know, masterfully. And, uh, you know, Somerset County, uh, you know, will find itself, you know, becoming, uh, you know, a, a, a consistently blue county, you know, in New Jersey. Fred, do you have any analysis on that? Oh, yes. And I, uh, my guess is probably, a, probably has a lot to do with Donald Trump. I think if you look Somerset is an affluent county. I mean, we know that from a lot of sampling that Mr. Trump never does and has never done well with college graduates, and that certainly describes a lot of people who live in Somerset County. And I, I think I'm sure Peg Schaefer has done a good job, but I know she has. But I mean, I think, I think Donald Trump is, as the assemblyman has said a few times, is uh, one of the Democrats' best weapons, the best friends. Well, that's why I had the Biden sign outside my house. I wanted to show the world I was educated. <laughs> oh, people know that. So, anyway. Colleen, what are your thoughts? <laughs> yeah, it's it certainly is surprising that in just you know a few years you could flip an entire uh, freeholder board. That's pretty amazing. Well, and and the um, constitutional officers too. Um, it, it's you know when I started covering. 
uh, politics so many years ago, um, Somerset County was just, it was a Republican County, like Morris County, you know, you, people, you, you just weren't going to get Democrats winning. Um, but I think you saw with um, Andrews Wicker winning the, that assembly seat, you know, partially in that district um, that used to be Jack Cittarelli's seat, who just happens to be running for governor. Um, you know, that was kind of the start of part of that as well. And, you know, then we brought in, um, they brought in another Democrat. Uh, it's just uh, Kip Bateman now who's left in the Senate. And I think a, probably a new map might, depending on what happens with that, could, you know, could completely change the, um, you know, what happens there. So yeah, it's, it's, it, it, and it, again, it also goes back to the, um, you know, to the, to demographics in part and to that registration, the Democrats have just done a really, um, like it's a better job in terms of, of boosting registration. Democrats, the unaffiliated voter in the state was, was the dominant um, percentage for forever. And it was just earlier this year that Democrat, Democratic registration outpaced unaffiliated. So Colleen, you just mentioned Senator Bateman, and I'm wondering uh, if you and Fred, what, what your thoughts are on his vulnerability next year. Fred, you want me to go or? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I mean, I think he was vulnerable in the last election and I think he will be vulnerable again, but um, he's pretty popular and it's gonna depend, I think, on what's, what's happening out there. Um, Murphy's popularity and how well he does could affect some of that um, as well. So again, not to repeat what we've said before, but you know, a few months is a long time and there could be a lot that, you know, that happens over that time period. Um, and the fact that he's still running in a district that has been favorable to him could mean that he will, um, you know, squeak out another win. Fred, do you have any thoughts on that? No, I, I would second that. And I'd say so much depends on, on the gubernatorial ticket. Let's face it, a, a lot of people, even people who vote, may not be overly familiar with their state legislative candidate. Present company excluded, accepted, expected, of course. So, I mean, I think it has to do with a lot. Of, lot we'll see how the Republican gubernatorial ticket unfolds. Uh, do you think that whether Trump wins or loses will have a big effect on that race? I think, no, I, I think as we were discussing, I think if Trump is no longer the governor, it helps Republicans next year in all their races in New Jersey. Uh -huh. so that's just because, it, because they don't have to defend Donald Trump and the Democrats can't bring up Donald Trump. And I think that, I think that would be a big, big difference. Assemblyman, do you have any thoughts on that? Well, the change in Somerset County is a combination of demographics which have changed in Somerset County and, of course, the Trump effect. It's not only Peg Schaefer, though I like her personally. I mean, she's in the right place at the right time. So I understand as the state chair, you know, you want to throw uh, some kudos towards uh, Peg Schaefer. But, you know, if I was Peg Schaefer, I, I could win as a Democrat over there, too, based on demographics and, and Trump. I told you the door is open. Oh, yeah, I think my politics, my policy politics, okay, are a little to the right of yours. Uh, it's just my interpersonal politics are closer to yours, which is a, a new thing in politics. But in terms of this trend in Somerset County, I mean, let me tell you about Westfield Summit, Cranford. These are my main towns. They were all Republican uh, years ago, right? A few years ago. I and mean, then what happened was they were motivated when Hillary lost. They were, the Democratic Party didn't exist in some of these towns. They were fragmented. Uh, they were disorganized. They didn't think they could win. And all of a sudden, they took over three of my biggest towns, Summit, Westfield, and Cranford. They actually won Berkeley Heights as well because there was a backlash when Trump beat Hillary Clinton. And I believe that's some factor in Somerset County and the numbers also, a lot of people moving in from Jersey City, Hoboken, New York City, into Westfield, into Somerset County. And those are traditionally either independents or Democrats. I mean, you know, this is not, this is not rocket science. You know, this is like, you know, you move in from Hoboken and you're a Democrat, you get to Somerset County, you vote like a Democrat, not complicated. They didn't vote, they go like this, I'm gonna vote as a Democrat, because I like Peg Schaefer, 
they couldn't pick Peg Schaefer out of a lineup. <laughs> so speaking of changing demographics. I'm, I'm going to be off in two minutes because I actually okay. am going to, it's a, it's a business call and I love this, but I'm not earning any money. So <laughs> I'm going to have to take the one business call. Unless, okay. unless Leroy Jones could, I could use one of those PPP programs at the state. If you don't, if you could talk to Murphy, help us out. Some of us trial lawyers, you know, we're hurting a little bit. See if you can give Murphy a call, tell him a brand mm -hmm. would like a PPP program. I work on it. It's, it's so, a tough audience to get a laugh. Let me tell you, this is a tough audience. <laughs> Glad you ain't in the comedy club. I'd be going out of business. You know, as, as the assemblyman knows, but Amanda and, and Fred and others, uh, Colleen probably don't, is that uh, Biden won Michigan while we've been on the phone. Oh. So I think that uh, Assemblyman Bramnick is going to ask Chairman Jones to write a letter to uh, the governor uh, or to the new president uh, recommending Governor Murphy for a cabinet position so that uh, Assemblyman Bramnick does not have to run against an incumbent. I think that's <laughs> part of what's going on here. So Assemblyman, before you have to jump off, is that, can you confirm that? <laughs> But once again, let me go into my political speak. Um, <laughs> once again, thank you for asking the question, Amanda. It's great to be with you. It's great to be with Nick, Colleen, Fred. They were, yeah, it, it's like, and I'm so happy. I want to wish everybody a, uh, is today Thursday? Great weekend. It's so actually nice Wednesday, but then Wednesday. You know, God bless America, you know, all that kind of business. So I'm going to check out now. Now, Leroy, do me a favor. Don't say anything bad about me, okay? Because I'm going to watch the tape. Never. I could, when I get out of here. About you, my Thanks friend. for having me, and uh, good night. And Nick, thank you very much too. And I, and that background in there, you should invite everybody over for a cocktail party. It looks good over there. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we were we were talking about changing demographics before, and Colleen, I was wondering, you live in Hunterdon. Are you seeing anything changing there? Yeah, I mean, I can tell you that I was quite surprised um, this year, four years ago, when uh, Donald Trump first ran, there were a heck of a lot of lawn signs. And clearly, he did get a lot of support in the county, but there are very few signs out there. I mean, there are some who have the big, the big flags, um, you know, and then a traditional sign. But um, I certainly saw far, far fewer of them, which, which made me think that, you um, he was not going to do as well in this county. Um, this is certainly still a, a, a strong Republican bastion, but it is a place with, uh, when we talk about those demographics where there are a lot of um, people with, you know, advanced degrees and um, higher incomes who just really have no taste for, again, the kind of rhetoric that, that Donald Trump has been, you know, putting forth for the last um, four years. So um, I've talked to a lot of Republicans who won't say publicly, but said privately that they were not gonna vote for, they weren't as, as um, bold as, as Nick Platt and you know put out signs, but said they would not be voting for, um, for Donald Trump now when, it, but, but the county has so far voted for Tom Kane over Tom Malinowski. We'll have to see again, these are not complete results. Um, so it, it's certainly not, uh, you know, a slam dunk that, that Hunterdon is moving in that direction. The interesting question, I think, is that if Mr. Trump is out of the picture, would these traditional Republicans who might have gone to the Democratic side just because they don't like Mr. Trump, would they resume their voting as a Republican if they were more reasonable Republican leaders at the top of the ticket? Because I don't think- That those, is an interesting- yeah, yeah, yeah. I know who say they don't want to vote for Donald Trump. That doesn't mean they're radical liberals. It just means that they don't like Donald Trump. Right. Right. Good point. Thank you. So what do you what do you think about that, Chairman? Uh, you know, do you I, think I, that yeah, go, ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. No, go ahead with the question. Oh, I was just gonna gonna repeat what he said. So, do you think that that a Trump loss really does change things? Uh, I, I think it. Uh, you know, I think it 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 uh, you know causes us to pivot and uh, you know and recalibrate. Uh, you know, and um, you know, you know, there there's there's obviously going to be some uh, some long lasting uh, you know fallout and impact from uh, you know the you know the first four years of Donald Trump. 
uh, you know, which, uh, you know, can be a, uh, you know, a, a case making, um, you know, proposition for, you know, for Democrats, but, you know, that ultimately wanes. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, how, how, how often can you, you know, can you continue to criticize Chris Christie? I mean, you know, at some point, you know, you have to, uh, you know, become responsible for, you know, your own. And, and uh, you know, I think we're at that point now where, you know, we've kind of put, you know, put that in the drawer and, uh, you know, we're moving forward with, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, an agenda that, uh, you know, doesn't necessarily, uh, you know, lend to, uh, you know, playing the blame game, but, uh, you know, more so, you know, talking about how we build a, uh, a stronger and fairer New Jersey. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to just ask one more question, then we're going to wrap up. So as kind of a close, more speculation, but where do you see politics in New Jersey going in the next five years? You know, we've been talking about a lot of trends. We've seen a lot of interesting movement in the 7th, the 11th, 25th, I still think is an open question. So um, I guess I'll just start with Chairman Jones on that. Well, um, you know, I, th I think the trend bodes well for, you know, for Democrats, uh, you know, registration, Democratic registration, uh, I believe will, uh, you know, continue to, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, to increase thereby, you know, widening the gap between, uh, you know, Republican and Democrats. I think, uh, you know, there's, uh, you know, uh, regionally, those that, uh, you know, uh, identify as unaffiliated voters, um, you know, regionally will, you know, will, will, you know, they will identify based on, you know, based on region and, you know, where they are. So, uh, you know, I think over the next five years, uh, you know, we will see, uh, you know, a trend of, you know, demo, you know democratic gains, uh, you know, a lot hinges on, uh, you know, what happens nationally as well, but uh, New Jersey has been able to sustain itself, uh, you know, for its, uh, you know, its own, uh, you know, local uh, and statewide, uh, you know, agendas. And, you um, you know, so I'm I'm encouraged about uh, you know the next you know five years. You know, it's people like uh, you know uh, Rapande Mehta, uh, you know Darcy Drager in the 25th. Uh, you know, we have uh, you know here in my own county, uh, you know a, a very strong uh, you know bench of uh, of young you know um, you know Democrats, uh, you know uh, uh, largely women. Uh, you know, which I think uh, you know the you know the um, the input of you know women in uh, you know in government uh, you know is uh, you know so important um, you know and uh, you know I'd like to see that happen you know more statewide you know we want to be able to uh, you know embrace the um, you know the progressive women wing of the party so that uh, you know we all have common ground and it gets back to being uh, you know that uh, you know th that empathetic um, you know embracement of uh, you know our democracy in order for it to work. So, uh, you know, so I'm encouraged, uh, you know, with all that. And I think, uh, you know, Phil Murphy, uh, you know, over the next, uh, you know, uh, four and a half years, you know, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, that's claiming re, you know, reelection, uh, you know, will play a large part in growing, uh, you know, the continued uh, democratic base in New Jersey. Thank you. Um, Colleen, yeah, what do you- I just, I just like to say something too. And that is, I mean, uh, Amanda and I, as you heard earlier in the program, uh, ran against each other last year. And the reason that I've um, become so turned off with my party is I'm a, re a regular Republican. And I think that Trump has forced Republicans to take a stand that they become much more strident. And I think in local elections, I remember when I ran for a freeholder, you know, I was asked about my position on, on uh, 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 right to life and, and I kept on saying, do you know what a freeholder does? I mean, you know, you're basically being asked questions that have nothing to do with the position you're running for. And if you don't endorse a radical position that in this case was put forth by uh, Donald Trump, then you're not one of the team. And, you know, I, I've been a Republican in my entire life. I've run in many elections as a Republican, but I can tell you, I'm so turned off with the way the, these local elections are run, the debates and that, you know, they just, uh, just the uh, vitriol that I think that if a Republican is going to win in New Jersey, they have to recognize that their constituents also are independents and Democrats and need their vote in order to win. And I'm hoping that that message comes through after tonight. Well said, well, Nick. 
Well so, so Nick, as our, our Republican spokesperson right now, uh, what do you think about this apparent Trump loss? Do you think that this is the end of Trumpism or is it going to no, keep? I, I'm, I'm, uh, and Chairman Jones, correct me here, but I was uh, listening. I, I went to bed at four o'clock this morning because I was just so upset. And now I'm smiling from year to year. Um, the idea that, that uh, they said, is this going to be the end of Trump? No, he's going to be uh, marched out for um, seminars, for conventions. He is going to be the new gorilla of, uh, because re remember, there's 43% of the nation thinks he's wonderful. Doesn't matter all the atrocities and all the, the things that he has done that you would never allow somebody like that in your home uh, uh, to have dinner. It doesn't matter. Um, so in that situation, I'm afraid that um, after last night, it did not send a message to the Republican that they had to change um, right. the way they behaved or their party platform. I, I agree. Now, obviously, we don't know. He, and really, the election is not over yet, even though it seems to be going in Joe Biden's direction. I think you're right. I mean, Trump isn't going anywhere. I mean, after all, suppose he does lose. He can always run again in four years, right? If he's not uh, uh, busy doing something else, like yeah, he's not in jail, but yeah, he can always do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I mean, I think I think there's going to be a lot. You know, we 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 haven't. You know, we well, the election's not over, but well, premature at the moment. If yeah. we get there, you know, if we get to that reality, you know, we're not going to hear the last of Trump, Donald Trump. I mean, he, I think he's, you know, I, I think he's done such a disservice because he's hijacked, uh, you know, the re 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 regular Republican Party. And uh, you know, and 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 you know, and made it something into his own, which is you know not good and not healthy for you know this nation and generations to come after. And uh, you know, and uh, you know, as we you know, as we move you know, as we move forward, uh, you know, hoping to you know to get a divided com country healed, uh, you know, he, I think his his agenda is to monetize perhaps, you know, what he can, you know, going forward for his own selfish, you know, for his own selfish means, uh, you know, but, you know, it's people like Nick and, and John Bramnick, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, that, that make government and working together good. I mean, we can be, you know, we can, we can have ideological, uh, ideological differences, you know, we, we, you know, we can, you know, our politics can be different, you know, but, you know, there is a, uh, you know, a sincere uh, willingness to serve people and you know, and that that is what you know is uh, you know the you know the the foundation of of what why we all get involved in this business. And he's 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 taken that away from you know folks that legitimately believe in public service, and he's made it some you know made it into something that's ugly and taken a small portion of the country and um, you know and individuals in that small portion and uh, you know giving them a voice you know that uh, you know that for a long time was you know was silent. And now he's breathed, uh, you know, the, the, uh, you know, the fans of racism and, you know, everything that's ugly about, uh, you know, uh, you know, that stuff into, uh, you know, this, you know, our, our world of civility, and we have to get it back. And uh, when we get it back, you know, we can work, you know, together across the aisles, Democrats and Republicans, uh, and argue points of views and different philosophies, but we do it in the name of what we believe, you know, that's in the best interest of the people we represent. Well, Chairman Jones, I hope that the Republicans uh, atone for the uh, the disservice that a Republican president has done to this country, and they run away from him um, and run away from the way you know he didn't have uh, he wasn't to get for he wasn't pro life before he ran. No. So this is the kind of thing that I'm just hoping that there's a lesson to be learned from other yeah. candidates and the uh, and those who serve currently as elected officials yeah he wasn't a, Thank he's you, Nick. Not a republican nick he's you know he's we'll, we'll leave that alone but he's never you know he's not a republican he just so, ran the republican banner yeah I, I think it would be it would be good when when trump presumably when trump is is gone has has stepped um out if the republican party can return to you know, more of a sense of normalcy, because as I think everybody is, has kind of pointed out, it, it really is important to have more than one voice in our uh, democracy. You need, you need both sides. You know, it, 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 when you have a full, I mean, it, I know the Democrats are thrilled about taking control in Somerset County, but 
it's never good to just have one party control. Um, there's, we need checks and balances. And so it would be very good if, if we could have the Republican party back to, to have those discussions that would then be about issues and not about, as we've said about Trump and what he's, what he's tweeted, but, you know, but talk about property taxes, which is always, you know, a, a big issue in New Jersey and other, and other issues. And, um, you know, and allow the, as, as you were saying, the local, races to just focus on what's happening locally. Um, you know, let let candidates, you know, talk those things out in a, a civil manner as it was meant to be. So Colleen, to, to bring it back to the wrap up question, do you, what do you see happening in the next five years? Do you see us getting back to that kind of issues based discussion? You know, I, I would certainly hope so. We, I, there, the opportunity is there, I think without um, you know, Donald Trump looming over everything, but I think it's going to depend on who the Republican Party winds up um, nominating next year, what kind of a race that they have in terms of their, you know, their, um, uh, their primary, who comes up, and then what kind of discussion they have. You know, it was really um, amazing, it seemed, it, it, even when the Democrats and Republicans don't agree at the state level, which they often don't, um, things are very civil, but it was amazing in those days right after COVID, how many you know near uh, unanimous votes there were to provide you know certain levels of support. It was both parties really working together, and you know that would be the kind of thing. Obviously, that's never that's not going to happen all the time, but but perhaps there's the opportunity for that to start happening again, depending on who um, you know who the Republican leadership winds up being. Thank you. Um, we seem to have lost Fred, so I guess I cannot go to him for any last words. Um, so I'd just like to to wrap up now and thank everyone. Thank you, well, to, to our two remaining panelists. And thanks so much to Nick for joining us. Um, so I'd like to also thank our partner, the New Jersey Hills Media Group, which ran this live on their all of their Facebook pages, which is so great. Um, and Nick, I'd like to just throw it back over to you for some last words. Well, again, uh, thank you to all our panelists and at the Corporation for New Jersey Local Media, we will be hosting many more seminars like this one. And because we believe that it'll strengthen community journalism throughout New Jersey, which is what our goal is. And we hope you will join us at News We Need, it's newsweneed.org to learn more and to donate to our fundraisers. And, and thank you all for, for attending. Thank you all. It's, uh, it's been my personal honor to be on with, uh, you know, Colleen, Fred and John, uh, you know, Amanda and, uh, and Nick, uh, you know, this was, uh, you know, really a great experience. And, uh, you know, I thank you for the opportunity. Well, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Good night, all. Good night. Good night.